everybody. Tom Matuska and Brent Wingfield here for the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Thursday afternoon in sunny, used to say Burbank, California. I think that was for <laughs> laughing or something like that. And this is kind of laughing this a is. little bit. Um, Spirit Lake, Iowa. And uh, beautiful day here in the lakes it is. area. And uh, lots of tourists around. It's kind of busy. It is crazy busy. Lakes and traffic, traffic going north and south across the bridge. It's bad. And uh, if you joined us for the last couple weeks, we um, were turning a uh, full shoulder mount into a wall pedestal. <laughs> and the reason for doing that is a lot of times uh, you may have a request for um, something that you don't have in your shop, or maybe you can't order it. And so we're trying to show you that don't be afraid to make some of these things. A lot of times you can do things better than the product you were to buy right. anyway. So with a little bit of practice and a little bit of uh, experience under your belt, um, you can you know, make a really nice wall, wall pedestal. This is the one that uh, we've been working on. And I think it was a competitor's choice mannequin. Yep. And we started with this mannequin right over here, and it's a full shoulder, um, CC 154. It's a lot of Bob Fothery mounting sticks you have behind you. We have a lot of Bob Fothery <laughs> Showing off our Bob Fothery bling. Stick this. Can you guys see this over here? I bet they can. Maybe you can. Um, but that was uh, just a full shoulder regular wall mount, mm -hmm. and we had a request for a customer that wanted um, a wall pedestal, and not only did they want a wall pedestal, they wanted a little bit more turn, they wanted something not quite as high as what we offer, and uh, so we can you know, go to the catalogs and we can search and we can order that. We yeah. also needed it bigger than anything that we had. Yeah. So uh, we took uh, this mannequin and uh, showed you how to, you can either order them without the, without the backboard on them, or you can cut the backboard off, and uh, what we did is we took a, just a tracing from one of our wall pedestals and we ended up cutting the backboard off, screwing this on as if this were the wall, tipping the shoulders out from the wall, and then we rebuilt all of this with our two-part foam. Yep. And uh, I think we got a good wall pedestal going. Yep. And, I like uh, it. I think that's going to be a nice pose. It's going to be a pretty deer. And uh, um, we started with our tools of choice. We use a lot of um, rasps. So you, we showed you the two-part foam, the A and B foam. Um, this is something we can't alter a mannequin without. As Best a, tool in the shop. Uh, files. Um, I like the coarse ones. Mm -hmm. um, These are great for fast uh, blending yeah. of your foam. Um, it, will, it will remove a lot of foam in a hurry, and these are just our form ruffers, uh, both the uh, regular and the uh, detail ruffer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can really put a lot of detail in. We don't leave them like that. We'll take, once we rough them up and establish our detail, a lot of times we'll take one of the sanding sponges. I like it. Yeah, there you go. Sanding sponges, that works pretty good. You can pick up at your local hardware store. On our form ruffers, how often do you replace the pads? Oh gosh, not very yeah, darn often. They last forever. And we, some people sell the wood. Our herbs are made out of plastic. So in order to replace Poly the pads. Polycarbonate, <laughs> not plastic. <laughs> in order to replace the pad, what is your go-to method for that? Um, to replace the pad, um, they're on with four screws and we just remove the four screws um, use the same screw holes if you've used them and had them for years and years and years it's possible that your screw holes may loosen and you might have tightened them and stripped out your threads put a little bit of epoxy down there and screw it right right back in um, we have handles over there that we have used and probably replaced yeah. a couple three times but you can't even recognize what color the handles are because they're all covered with uh, hide paste and paint and epoxy and everything else. Um, these the nice, are great. The nice thing with yeah. ours too is they're very bright and colorful and not one is the you, same. No, none are the same. And they're pretty. Look at and You don't lose them in the shop. We got passion purple. We got 
aqua blue. And the detail rougher, just show them the detail oh, rougher. Yeah. Uh, the problem with a lot of detail roughers that I've had in the past is because the, the leather strip that these little teeth are in, uh, because it is so narrow, the leather loosens up and it slides off the side. So you'll be, you know, using it, trying to rough up a mannequin and um, for glue adhesion and that keeps sliding off to the side. So this one is actually made with a couple little rails on the side that do not get in your way. They're low enough that the profile is quite low. It doesn't bother the teeth and uh, it holds that pad in place. Works really good. But anyway, um, I love these for um, I did that with this, just anytime you're putting in detail, I just turn these on the edge. So you're using kind of the corner of it just to put in a... To get a narrower edge, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we'll come in with just one of these sanding pads and take out your teeth marks. And now you have a really nice, smooth muscle definition. Kind of one of our methods that we use in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you turn around, um, this deer has the wood block in the back. I didn't come quite up as far as I could have. I extended onto this from last mm -hmm. week. I, um, a lot of times we will do these custom sculpture jobs, and as we sit back and look at them, um, um, as I was looking at this, I added this much today. Mm -hmm. just because I thought it looked nicer, looked a little yep. classier. Now, whenever you're doing something like this, um, the one thing we haven't done yet is we've never <laughs> just, just fitted, just fit it. So at some point, before you get the hide out and get this all smeared up with glue, make sure that you lay your hide on because you're actually, I mean, we extended this quite a bit. What if you don't mm -hmm. have enough hide? You yep. know? Um, armpits Check are also it. something that you you end up altering and you may cause something to not fit down here. So make sure um, when you get close to this, make sure that you start um, putting the hide on and yep. test fitting it and make sure. The only thing I think we'd like to do with this is uh, maybe tip the head down just a little. Yep. This is leveled as if he's gonna be on the wall and he's yep. kinda, kinda looking up real high in the nose. Um, and I think we're gonna use a, one of the new XP change out heads, is that yep. right? Yep, this, is, this mounts a beautiful deer, but the XP head is a new one to us and pretty yeah, exciting, we really yeah. do. Every deer we've put together with it has been really, really nice. So um, we'll show you how to use a change out head. Um, ours is, this is seven and a half and we're changing for seven and a half, but you could change a seven and three quarters seven, for sure. a seven and a half or seven and a quarter if it was one that you had in your shop. Um, so we'll show them how to do that. Are we ready for that? Are we? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Um, so to do that, we're gonna take, you have, your change out heads will come with a little bit of a neck stub, I guess for lack of better terms. It's just a short sculpting area um, intended to be blended into your mannequin. Now that will change, that neck angle will change from form to form um, if you look at all of your alterations. So if we were to tip the head down on this mannequin, you notice how high this, this becomes. So we're not going to use any of this neck. We're going to actually cut right behind the jawline and we'll make the same cut on our form and that way we'll have a nice transition between the two that will marry together really easily. Um, can I cut it on the bandsaw? Sure. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this off real quick. Can I borrow a marker and we'll show them? I'm going to cut right here in front of the atlas where it meets just behind the jaw, something like that. And you can cut them straight, you can cut them yeah. just like making a little arc back yeah. there, works good. And, and it'll match this angle right through here-ish if we make that cut nice, um, hopefully they match. So I will walk over here. Oops. You can cut it, you can use a, a saber saw, you can use a hand saw.
We'd have got scolded so, if that was all. Are we yeah. back? Yes, we're back. Okay. <laughs> and while we were off camera, we made a mystery cut here. So we just cut that off on the bandsaw. They think that we did that just to show them. So do you want, should we make a line up there? Gonna work? You want me to mark a line? Or yeah, you got it? Oh no, I got oh, it. Oh, he's got it. Okay, it looks like you're about an inch and a half down from the back of the skull. Yep. Right under the chin. Straight. That's really straight. We almost practiced that, but we didn't. And then now you can see how nice that, that goes on there. And we have a little bit of room um, to make this slight alteration to the head angle. So we can rotate, rock that down just a little bit. You want me to cut some of that on there? I think you probably could, just a little bit. Right here? Yeah. Maybe just a little bit right there. I'm taking off everything I put on last week. Good? Yeah. I think that's going to be real nice. Now, how do we want to attach this? Typically, we'll screw them on with, we use a lot of torque head screws. Do that. Something like that. Put one in and then you can look. Now, a lot of times, we, we use in our shop, we use a lot of the form alteration screws that we use. Um, these work really, really well. I think we can probably get by with something much smaller, the torque head screw. Good spot. I think it's pretty straight. We're making sure we're square in the middle. And I'd put in four or five of them because we don't want them the head moving with the pressure of the foam. You want to look at him? We've got a few in him. Always a good idea to step back and just look from a distance at angle. Ooh, good. Look okay, angle, yeah. tip, and Neck so is balanced on the sides, it looks very nice. I'll now zip we, a couple others in there. Just we have been known to put something together and cut it right apart as soon as we do it, <laughs> just because we didn't like what we ended up with. Quite common. Never. That's a vicious rumor. Um, and incidentally, while you're putting these screws in, um, they have to go in on an angle. Make sure that you're separating the screw angles so that they don't all meet in one pivot point. We could end up with six screws in this head, but if they all meet in one place, it's like having just one screw in it. So make sure that you've got some surface area covered as you're putting your screws in. That way it won't move, it won't tip up and down as the foam expands. Ready for foam? foam it? Let's do it. Now, um, we foam on a daily basis. Oh we foam many times a day, and we've got a lot of different techniques at work. Um, you can take, a lot of people use duct tape. You can wrap this entire mm -hmm. seam with duct tape, leave yourself a little flap, and pour your foam in there, and then cover the flap. 
works really good, like for filling large areas in your foam mm -hmm. somewhat under pressure, which will make a stronger foam. Problem with that in this instance is if we had it under pressure, it's gonna put pressure on the top of that head and it's gonna pull yep. it out of our screw holes. So I think um, my favorite method would be to tack this in certain areas. I mean, we might, we might be able to fill the whole thing, but I like to put a little bit of foam in the back, um, let it run down under the chin, and that will tack that. Once it solidifies, then if you want to wrap tape around it or, or just uh, free foam it, you can you know, free foam it also. And this is our three pound uh, mannequin foam. It's very strong. It doesn't, doesn't have to be under pressure. Um, it'll give you a real nice, strong union without. Yep. We also have 10 pound. Um, if you're ever using you know, something you want to put together like pine, I mean, it's as hard as pine it is, hard. Um, is the 10 pound. So all I'm going to do is, um, this is by weight. When I mix small amounts, I kind of go, I don't, I kind of throw the weight out the window and I'll do maybe a half inch in this cup and a half inch in this cup of A and B. And try not to mix too small of an amounts. Um, this would fill the whole head almost. Um, but it's too difficult to make a really nice even mix by doing a little bitty, you know, 10 drops of this and yeah. 10 drops of that. So I am actually going to waste, waste some here. But you'll get a nicer, smoother, more consistent foam too. Now our foam is meant to be mixed, um, they say 15 seconds, depends on what kind of mixer you're using. Um, for small amounts like this, I'm just using a tongue depressor. I'm going to mix A and B together. Um, one of these is very thin and one is very thick. I like to pour the thin one into the thick because that tells me that I'm getting all of this out of there. The thick, mm -hmm. a lot of times it adheres to the side of the glass and you don't get it all. Now I just want a nice butterscotch color. So there's no marbling. See how nice creamy color. Um, if you, I want to make sure there's no streaks. If you mix it too much after it is thoroughly mixed, you're going to whip air into it. And we don't want to whip any air into it. Now I'm going to take a very small amount of this and I'm going to pour it in here now and I'm hopefully some is going to run down the front. I'm trying to get it on my shoe. And get on your shoe, yes. But now if you poured that whole cup, it would all end up on the floor, wouldn't it? It all end up on your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made nice it, didn't shot. It? Well, that one did. Nice <laughs> shot. My board. Oh, they didn't know. You didn't have to say okay, that. Okay, now this is thickening up. Um, now is a good time to pour some more in here. Now with a free rise not being under pressure, um, I can probably get rid of this whole cup without blowing my head out of position. And worth noting too, if you do spill some foam, if foam does hit the floor and you don't happen to have paper, let it set up. Don't try to get it now. Um, you'll make a mess. Um, later on, it'll just pick off as one nice solid piece, but I don't know if you want that over there. Um, yeah, I could bring a little bit up. And we just let this run down the side. It'll easily rasp off or carve it off with a knife. Yeah, that's going to be real nice. Perfect. And uh, um, the nice thing about foam is you can sand it. If you put too much in, you can carve it off. If, if you don't get enough on, you can always add more. It sticks to itself. It sticks to everything. It yeah. uh, sticks to itself, and you can always um, you know, blend and add or shave down. So it's kind of, um, you're, you're actually being a sculptor. You're going to sculpt that foam into the mannequin that you want. Um, a nice additive, if they wanted to use a change-out head or put change-out heads into the toolbox of tricks that they've got, 
um, a really good alteration to take a mule deer and make it into oh, sure. a, a mule deer um, shoulder mount because you may be able to find the wall pedestal that you like in a whitetail, but not a mule deer. And with some just simple anatomy changes and a nice mule deer head, one of our sagebrush mule deer change out heads, you can come up with And we do that quite to. often too. We do. Um, and the difference are to the average observer, um, nobody will even know the difference. Um, the thing that jumps out at me on a mule deer is their brisket seem to be a little squarer and blunter, yep. whereas a white tail may be a little pointier, yep. you know? Um, but other than that, the neck anatomy, the length and everything um, works very well in substituting. Yeah. So just handy for, for some of the change out heads. And now let this set up um, nice and firm. I always touch it before it's time and I get it all over my hands, <laughs> which I'll show you now. Um, it is not ready, so see you get it sticky on your hands. Um, as it sets up, as it cools, it will, um, you'll be able to touch it and it'll get really nice and firm. And then we can proceed. What do you guys have for us while we're waiting? Um, we have all sorts of stuff. Lots of new products that have come in. Um, lots of old products that are back in stock. Um, we do want to give a congratulations to Scott Humble. He was the winner of the 2020 Utah Taxidermy Association Masters Division for the Competitors Award. So congratulations to Scott. Scott's a very talented very, Utah taxidermist. Very, very multi-species talented. Everybody's heard that name for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. um, and the Missouri show is going on this weekend. That yes, it is. So a huge apology for not being able to partake in that. We're trying yeah. to keep everybody and their families safe here. Um, but if you are at the Missouri show, look for the Masters Award. Matusca Competitors oh. Award of the Masters Division will be there. Um, and all of you members, make sure to call us and talk to us. We'll have the member list next week. So we have a deal for everybody who's partaking kind of to make up for us not being there. So make sure to contact us for that. You ready yet or you want me to keep going? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, it's getting hard. Um, some things that are back in stock. Pro One High Pace was out of stock for a little bit. We have it back in stock in the oh, gallon nice. and the five gallon. Um, reflective eyes, we were out of those because of this whole overseas, COVID, yada, yada. Reflective eyes are back in stock in pretty much all of the species. I think one coyote size is out. Um, our Euro eyes, um, the ADIs that go in our duck heads and bird heads are all back in stock, which means all the bird heads that with eyes so that were out of stock are now in stock. All the bird kits that were out of stock are now in stock. Um, our rock bases, all our wood bases, plus some new additions are online now, so you can check out all those. Mm -hmm. You've been busy. Mm -hmm. Very, very busy. Um, tumbled cedar driftwood. There is a huge call for this, and everyone's wondering what's going on. We have tracking on it. It will be here Tuesday. So tracking says it will be here Tuesday for our first shipment, and then we'll get another one coming after that. Um, and you can also take advantage of our artificial. And then our Ready for this? tool. Mm -hmm. Diam has some really, really nice tools. We just, we've been out of our top selling one. It's a red one and it's a double ended cleanup tool. Um, many uses of cutting, detailing, shaping, scraping, um, deepening grooves, removing imperfections. All the Diam tools are stainless steel and made in the USA. They're nice tools, really, really nice tools. So that one is back in stock. That's a 030536, and it's only 595. So that's a good tool, nice. and then we've added more. Um, yeah, they're nice. Here. Color, yeah. nice, soft, cushion handles. Nice handles, yep. Color coordinated. Yep. You can you never can have to see look. them. I used oh, yeah. to take, when I first started, if I lost my eye tool, um, I was done for the day. You know, I would still tear my shop apart. I finally took my eye tool and painted the handle on it hot orange. And now Zyme has all colored handles, so it's easy. They got not, my idea. Yeah. It's my not idea. Only that, you know what else they have is if they're not round to where they roll, they actually are angled so they don't roll. They stop and they won't fall. Is table. that not a good idea? That's a great wow. idea. They thought of everything. I know. So there's no rolling. Uh, that's funny. Okay, if we're ready here, um, this is uh, hardened up nice and sturdy. Now's the time before you put any reinforcement in here. Um, 
to double check and make sure everything's straight because once you, once you uh, reinforce this, it's gonna be harder to change anything. Yep. So stand back, look at it. Um, if you want to, put a hanger on the wall, put the antlers on, see what you think, because now's the time to change it if you need to change anything. If you haven't test fit anything, now's the time to test fit it. Make sure that things fit. There's no sense in fighting this um, and then only to find out that you have to take the shoulders down or something isn't gonna fit. So now's the time to do all of that. We don't think we have to, so we're gonna proceed. <laughs> uh, we can fix it off camera, we'll now, never know. Foam is really, really star strong, but it's not as strong as your mannequin when it was under pressure. Um, I could take this and I could probably bust it off. You don't wanna mount the deer, give it to the customer, have it fall off the wall or you know, open the car door when he takes it home and fall in the driveway and the head bust off. Um, that kind of thing happens. And I'm sure any of you that have been in this business for very long have stories like that. Um, to, um, like I, I think I said last week, a lot of people use auto body putty mm -hmm. and they will secure this with auto body putty first and then foam the gap around. Um, I, I like my foam a little bit better. I think I get a stronger adhesion with foam. Um, you can take all of your screws out or you could sink them in if you wanted oh, sure. to. If you don't think those screws are gonna hurt you and you're never gonna have to cut into the mannequin, um, you can just take those and you could <laughs> sink them right up in there and that will add reinforcement. Or you're looking at me funny Five like you're gonna have screws. to cut the, I know, that's true. <laughs> or I might have to cut the head off. But we wanna use them again because they are so expensive. Um, any of you that are still using Phillips screws in your shop or square oh, heads man. would love torque head screws, but I swear the price has got to be three times a Phillips screw. It's ridiculous. So we will save those and use them over. Now, we really don't have any reinforcement in here and I've seen people do all kinds of different things. Um, one thing that's pretty common to do, I've seen a lot of the sheep people do it, is they'll take a spade bit and they will drill a hole right through the forehead, down into the neck, like a one inch diameter hole, tip it upside down, knock the foam dust out of it, um, fill it about half full of auto body putty, take a broomstick down and countersink it to the oh. surface of the head. Um, with the auto body, we've done it with moose and things like that and elk, with the auto body putty, and that stick, um, it's never gonna bust off of there. Um, that works good. It's a little more than we think we need on an animal like this. One of our methods is we'll take a piece of ready rod and I'm gonna put that ready rod right through the forehead and I'm going to angle it so that I can hopefully fall right down through most of our cuts. And to put it in, the first thing I did was We've got this nice little abrasive disc on the Dremel tool and I made a slot in the top that I can get a screwdriver bit in uh -huh. and I sharpened the other end. Our uh, sanding belt is not very sharp so it's not the sharpest. <laughs> I usually make a little pyramid tip on the tip. I'm going to put this in my drill to start with. Now, you don't want it to come out here, so I'm going to start here. Hopefully, hopefully it'll stay within the confines of the mannequin. Oh, it must be a head block. Noisy. And so that the length of that actually gets past each one of those cuts that we put through the neck. So the, you want to make sure that you're reinforcing at each one of the cuts, not just where the head unit is. Now, we don't want to leave this up here. So that slot in there so that I can take a regular screwdriver bit.
and I countersink that right down below the surface. Um, if I had foam, I would pour a little foam in there. Sometimes, because we a lot of times we have more foam to do. Um, or when you mount the deer, you can put a little clay over there. But that should secure that head on really, yep. really secure. Yep. And then it's a matter of trimming up your foam and sculpting the detail back in. A lot of times we'll take something like a two by two. Two by two is what um, I would Depends. Said, yeah. We've even taken two by fours. Yep. A lot of times we'll take a two by four and cut it in the shape of the neck. Yep. And we've taken a sawzall down the back of the neck. Yep. Um, something sizable. Definitely. Um, there's yep. a sawzall down, drop it in, and then refoam it. Yes. Foam over yes, the back. yes, yes, yes. Yep. We'll even bondo it a little bit. Sometimes we'll bondo them in. Yep. But be careful, an elk is already really, really heavy. And when you start adding a gallon of bondo to an elk neck yep. to hold your board in place, sometimes it's too much. Um, good, good application for the 10 pound foam. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do that often. Then you're just gonna blend your foam to match the mannequin that you have underneath. And don't forget, like and share, like and share, like and share. Now this is, once I get the majority of the foam removed, that's a good, good place for your um, cuts all file. One of my favorite methods as I'm, as I'm doing this is I'm always feeling things. I feel right now I have a big square corner here. Um, it's gone, you know. But you will, you will be able to feel things that you can't see. change out head we have the seven and a half on here but that's something that we have new available too is the seven and a quarter and the seven and three quarters um, that they can use for any of their um, people that have been using them really 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 like them lots of feedback lots, lots of good feedback it's a nice white tealy white tealy look is that a word I, it is now
And we just use these sponges. These are coarse sponges. We have them in the shop. We do a lot of fish carving with them. And, mm -hmm. and they just we do. They're just very handy. handy. Very, very handy. And next week, what are we going to show them? Oh, man. I heard we're going to show them a lot. But I don't know that we got approval for that yet. What do you think? Um, we have noses to show them. Oh, we do? Yep. We have noses to show them that go with our XP form. Um, we got to, eventually we're going to have to mount this deer. We've got backs to show them. Back, the back that. How to treat the back of that wall pedestal. People keep asking about the nose. up to the XP form very nicely too. And what's the benefit of using a artificial Well, we did a pretty extensive uh, live demonstration a couple months ago on the efficiency of it. Did I win? I, I don't think it's been determined yet. John Bellucci <laughs> thinks I won. He does. He does. It, I think it was under protest, and I'm not sure how or why, but um, no, the anatomy is great on the artificial nose, the ease of, ease of use, um, lots, of, lots of positives to it. We like, um, we like the way it installs. We like the, clear, the nice translucent septum, um, fun stuff. Nice. I well, like I that. Think it'll, I think, I we think it'll work. It. We've got a little, um, a little crack under here we'll want to fill. Oh, yeah. Um, and somebody mentioned, Mandy mentioned how we kind of have a lot of these Bob Fothery mounting stands around here. We kind of get them at the shows and like them a lot. Pretty partial to them. I think we must have six or seven of them. And there's a whole lot of accessories, too. Fun accessories. Um, the one that we like the most seems to be that uh, thin, arced. It's kind of for a wall pedestal, that narrow accessory back. Now, occasionally, as, as uh, we're sanding and and shaving and shaping, you take off too much. Mm -hmm. um, um, on one side, I kind of took his neck down thinner than I wanted to. Um, I would just pour more foam right over that, let it harden up, and, and reshape it. What kind of treasures do you have over there? Pan pastels due to a customer ordering from Blick, which those of you that order from Blick for pan pastels, kudos, but you don't get candy and you pay a lot of money for shipping. So we ordered <laughs> one pan pastel because we didn't have the color and I said, you just call us next time and I'll get it for you. So I special ordered for him, but then we actually added a whole bunch to our line. So those are all the colors that we have added. Wow. Our line is 14 new colors. So um, $7.50 each. We run sales on them all the time. Um, these are the colors that we just added. So you'll see them in the catalog. You can see them online. All that um, in the new catalog. In the new one. The new one. The that's new one, not, not out yet. Not yet. <laughs> I don't know when that's going to make it. It's coming. Yeah. Um, but there's some really cool colors. Open mouth colors. Um, some more mammal finishing colors. Some colors that look like they would be great in our fish work. Um, yeah, just a neat palette of colors on top of the, how many do we carry already? What's oh, that put us to? 
I feel like there's about 80. Yeah. I, that sounds right. That's a lot. It is a lot. My summer I have so many that we carry out of so many <laughs> that we have. Never find my screw hole again. <laughs> I hope you don't have to take that rod out. I know. We've done that too. Yes, we have. So we'll let that set up. We will blend that. Um, the next thing we will do is um, we should test fit him sometime. Make sure no. he fits. Once he fits, um, we'll probably use one of the noses, artificial noses. Yep. We'll put that on. We will set the antlers, um, do the lip slot, set eyes, model on ears. Um, something else that whenever you deal with wall pedestals that uh, can get you in trouble is the balance so that they hang on the wall. Oh, yeah. Without That's, tilting. And that was um, something we kind of we were going to discuss in one of the early ones about where to set that balance, but we didn't um, have to. You guys kind of touched on this, but can you use auto body filler or do you have to use foam? Sure you can. No, you can use auto body filler. Absolutely. Um, and it, it works fine. Um, another thing we have new is we have our pre-tech. A lot of people want to know what colors would I use for fish? So. The guys have picked seven colors and a reducer, and they have added that to a fish kit, which again is online, but not in the catalog yet. So there is seven, would you say, base colors? I would say base colors. These are just, this is just a good primary starting kit. Um, you're going to want to adapt that for every species. You're going to add a little bit of this or a little bit of that. But this will get, get you through most of your, um, most of your base colors to get started. Every species is going to have a little variance, but. So we have the game head kit, and it's item number CX208G. This one just has an F at the end, so CX208F, and it's these eight colors, um, two ounce kits, and it is for $51.95. So you can find those online if you're wanting to get into Createx and you do a lot of fish, but you don't know what colors to use. Um, we're just trying to make it a little easier for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> something that, that uh, with Createx too, you can mix and match any of these colors. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, if you want a darker green, um, you can add a little black to it. If you want a, a more olive green, add a little, you know, brown to it. There's also a lot of additives. They have a whole oh, man. lot we of additives. We can do a whole segment on just that. And you, um, you've been painting fishing lures. Like there yeah. is a... 40, 30, balancing clear, yep. is that the right yep. numbers? And it's a clear that you can add to your paint and you turn it into an automotive, durable automotive yep. finish. And um, it won't, you don't have to clear over, it's very, very strong. Um, there's also um, a transparent additive transparent that base. you can add yep. just a little bit of paint to it and you can make, um, you can take this yellow and uh, add a few drops to the transparent and turn it into a real, real transparent film rather than a solid color. Yep. Um, there yep. are so many different methods to ex experiment with and we're still learning, we really but um, Cretex has been around for actually a, a long time. And if you want to see how good it is, um, look at Cretex in the, on um, YouTube and the people that are painting fishing lures and portraits oh gosh, and things yeah. like that. Watch what can be done with Createx and- uh, Follow them on Instagram. It's way it's, better, way it's better really than me cool. showing you because I'm not as good as some of these people with Createx. It's just yeah. fascinating it's, what can be done with it. It is a neat medium. We're just, just- Scratching the surface. Yeah, tip of the iceberg. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is, you notice that now my, my back plate is right here but my head is way over there, mm -hmm. and you get a big set of antlers on there, there's no way you can balance this. And we right. used to carry, we don't carry it anymore, but it was a little peg that went in a square slot, yeah. and it was 20, high 20s, I think it was like 25 to $28. Oh, wow. And you would screw the, the 
tube onto the wall, level it up real nice, put the post on here, and you slip it on. And it was, I was charging people, you know, $30 to put that on their pedestal yep. mounts. And then it was difficult to get it straight. Um, one of the best ways to keep this from tilting on the wall, keeping it straight, is a uh, no-tilt hanger. And these have a spacer on them. Is there an S after it or something like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. And what's the benefit of a spacer? The spacer, um, you put a, this goes on to the mount, and the spacer allows room for your screw head. So you don't have to countersink the backboard. You can just put them directly on. So, so you're going to measure, and I think this one's three inches from where the screw's going to screw head to screw head. And you're going to draw a line on your wall, put a dot three inches apart, put screws in, put this on the back of your animal. Um, it hold, goes on with four screws. This could go on the wall too if you wanted. You could do it backwards. Um, this goes on your back plate. You've got the screws on the wall. You line them up. It locks in and it can't tilt one way or the other. Yeah. So for any of these, um, you know, way out, you know, the head's foot and a half away from your hanger and there's no way to make, make that balance, um, try the no tilt hanger because they work really well. Um, get the one with the spacer, otherwise yep. you'll have to put some kind of spacer in there like a little sheet of plywood maybe or something like that. Um, they come in all different sizes. They come in little bitty guys onto great big ones. Yep. Um, they even come in elk size. It's a good hanger. We sell a lot of those. It's especially for an instance, instant like this. Yep. Doug Douglas is asking if these are lacquer paints. They are not. They are water-based paints. Now, they, something uh, about the water-based paints, I've had a lot of water-based paints, and if you leave them in your gun, my, I ruined good airbrushes because I can't get the, some of the water-based paints out. Um, these clean up very, very easy, and once you get them cleaned, they almost feel like they're lubricated. I don't know if you noticed yep. or not. Um, your trigger seems to work better and things like that. I don't know why, but it, it's, uh, if it's the solvents they use or whatever, and there's about... 4011, 4012, 4013. Yeah, 13, yeah. Um, there's a gun cleaner. If your gun is 08, so yeah. bad that you don't know what to do with it, um, what's that number? That's Restorer, and that's 4008. And that, and um, I mean, it'll dissolve that paint that's yeah. hardened in there over a month's yeah. time. And it even. will even eat lacquer paint, too. Yeah, um, it works real good. Don't substitute it for reducer or thinner. It's very hard on the paint. Um, so, it breaks down but, the paint really yeah, good. Yeah, it does. So don't, it's called restore. don't swap those out, but 4008 Restore for um, cleanup of dried substances. But water-based paint, we have not, literally have not run our exhaust fan in here other than Bondo fumes um, for Ever. almost a year. Yeah, almost a year now. Very true. We take it out. <laughs> It's kind of noisy. It is. It's an explosion-proof exhaust fan, and it will suck the windows in. <laughs> it does. It does exactly that. Slams every door in the building. What else you got for us? Now, I think I've been working on new products for the uh -huh. new 2021 catalog, and so some people reach out and say they like things. Some people want to try this. We get it. We had a customer call him. He really wants the 36 millimeter in the pear, narrow banded, dark brown, and medium brown eyes. Oh, we wow. now have them. Wow. So we have buffalo those. and moose. Or elk. Yeah. Moose. African. Yeah. Various so African we do game. have those. They're online, not in the catalog yet. Um, Clint Ricky put out there that a quick tip. He's been using Easy Car for almost a year now. Mainly use it for finishing inner ear seams and nostrils. It's the easiest smoothing epoxy he's ever used. Um, amazing stuff. We actually will have it in next week. So we ordered it, we ordered the 307 light, we ordered the thickener. So those of you that are familiar with it, um, help us, because we're not yet. But we're listening to our customers and we're gonna play with it some more, but we do yep. have it ordered. So it should be here next week sometime. Um, we do have a couple new tools, which I need to pass off before I hurt myself. <laughs> this is super, super. And that looks like a great lip sharp. slot. 
cutter. It's got okay. a little saw uh, yeah. blade to it. It does. I wondered, what are you going to use that for? Know, and I that's a great. Toe. Yeah. So this one is um, the 030542, and it's got the two sizers there. I feel like you could even straighten that hook over. I thought so too. Um, and then the other one we have is. Another blue handle, just really nice. All made in the USA, all stainless steel. Um, it's a 030541. And that one, to let you hold it, um, cutting, detailing, shaping, scraping, grooving, removing imperfections. Um, it's all, both of these are made of high grade hand forged solid stainless steel with a rubber handle. So just really nice tools, just more part of the um, design line. This would be, make a great eye tool, but what catches my eye on this, it's like that, uh, that, is it the detail tool that we used yep. to yep. use for cutting um, tear ducts? Yes. This sure. one is a little bit thicker, it's sharp, and it will follow the curve of your tear duct skin without making too wide of a cut. It's gonna give you enough room for the tear duct skin to travel up in there, and it, it's got the right I hollowed out up under here. It gives gives you the right curve of that lacrimal gland. This looks like your finger. It does look like my finger. <laughs> we also have a couple files, and we're playing with these yet. But these Zion Thanks for files. Big old finger. <laughs> <laughs> big big fingernails. Good for you fish people for artificial fish fins and yeah. seams yeah. and things like that. This is one. That's not new. I, this, well, take your normal clay there. And what is super annoying with this clay is the twist tie. That's like a loaf of bread. I hate twist ties on a loaf of bread. I cannot stand it. First thing that goes into it. But you pull this and it always comes untied. We super duper do it. But even when I'm packing it in boxes, it comes undone. Now, cut this off for one of your coats you're giving away or something like that and keep it. But it comes in a two pack. You just slide it on. Now, some would say, oh, why not just use a zip tie? It's way less expensive, yada yada. Go for it. But then cut it off every time you want to use yeah. it and put a new one on. So enjoy. But this is super easy. It stays. There's no moisture getting in there. Good idea. No good idea. That's a good idea. It's Sometimes easy. I'm not on board with some of these ideas. For a pair. That's a good idea. Thank That's you. a very. Bombed it at first. <laughs> Bombed it. <laughs> 350 for a pair. So there's that. Again, all these are new products we have in stock. We have they're online, but not in the catalog. Um, did you tell them about those nice little pokers? Uh, no, we didn't do the pokers. Um, I like those. These nice little pokers. Right? I would call them regulators for yes. adjusting yep. skin and hair adjusting. patterns yep. on your face of your small mammals and deer. Yep. I like that. Deer. Um, I think Two they'd sizes. be a pretty good little preening pick for uh, bird feathers, too. And so we have them in two sizes, and how would you explain the sizes? Um, big one and a little one. <laughs> um, the little one is very stiff, but, but like a heavy T-pin. Yeah, but not bendable. Like these an upholstery bend. pin. But yep. uh, for adjusting skin, um, these are great. And uh, you're something called a regulator, uh -huh. you know, a hide regulator. This one is much heavier. I would probably opt for that one. It's for throwing at people, I think. Good. <laughs> um, Beer darts? Yeah. 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 But yep. uh, that one is not going to bend. Another, I mean, great for, for care skin. Once you have glue underneath your skin, mm -hmm. this is, I think they're great. I want both. And again, stainless steel. Um, and those Colored the handle. That with the handles, they don't roll. So they're not going to roll right off. And stab you in the leg. And stab you in the leg. <laughs> I actually was playing, or actually I was pregnant at the time, but I went tailgating with some people and they were playing beer darts and one of the guy got stabbed in the leg. <laughs> True story. Uh, but that's kind of all we have for new products anyway. That's pretty um, exciting. That's a, that's a lot. It was a lot. Oh, and our bases we'll show you guys next week. And maybe. that's just a start. It is. Our winner, so make sure to like and share. I saw a lot of people sharing 
um, already. So and what do they get this year, this week? This week, you're giving away XP. XP, up. seven and a half change out head. Oh, these are nice heads. Really, really nice heads. You'll like that. You're going to get exciting. it. And I urge you to switch out one of your heads and put on one of the next new XP heads. You're going to buy. You're going to buy all your deer heads and all the mm -hmm. XP heads. And you're going to whack them all and you're going to put them on because yep. they do look so nice and they're so easy to mount on. They really, they really mount nice. And they accept they your really noses do. beautifully. Yeah. Yep. Contoured. They they work with our change out, our change out nose really well. So make sure to share the video for your chance to win every week. We do giveaways every single week. And somebody won one this week or that's next week? The change out head is from last week's share, which is Gerardo Ramos. Wow. So congratulations. congratulations. You're going to like it. And I have, I talked to Cole and he is going to check to see if he can do a walk through that we'll share to you guys at the Missouri oh, wow. show. Yeah. Um, if he gets that cleared, we'll share that. So those that have not been able to go to any shows and got that taken away this year, you can at least see some of the mounts that are there. So stay tuned for that this weekend. You got to remind me, fun. I'm watching me on the camera and I, you got to remind me my mouth turns down like mm, grumpy all the time. <laughs> Got to make sure I, you got to do this to me once more. Smile. There you go. <laughs> uh, is that better? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So next week, you guys are doing fitting the cape? Um, we might just proceed with this deer. Should we, we do that? we got to mount it. We haven't mounted a deer for a while, and maybe we'll yeah. um, at least get it started. We'll show you then the nose, eyes, ears. Um, we've done it before. We're going to do it again, the yeah. similar method. Yep. Um, but we'll show them some neat new stuff. New equipment, fun stuff. new microphones, new cameras, Ooh, so it may be a whole maybe. new look to you That's from the last, from the last time we're we did. We're crossing we'll our fingers. fingers. I, we already screwed up, or I screwed up. <laughs> that was my bad. Um, don't forget 15% off two of our Facebook Live oh, yeah. sponsored yep. products with FBook15. Um, you can call it in or not, but the... Urethane foams, 15% off. The isotope Sinalube silicone mold release. The form wrappers, the form wraps, the files, and your alteration screws are all 15% off through tomorrow at midnight. And don't be afraid to do what we show you. You know, I mean, you could yeah, give it a try. We Absolutely. could have taken a form that didn't work for us. We could have sent it back. And I don't know what it costs to send a form back, but I bet it's a lot because you already paid shipping yep, here. Shit. Now you're going to send it back. Then you're going to reorder, you know, so yep. you got shipping three times. And uh, don't be afraid to attempt some minor alterations to get comfortable. And, right. and you will get braver and braver and braver. Yep. And pretty soon it'll be second nature to you. So yes. whenever you ship back to a company, it's way cheaper than when they ship there. Haven't you heard? No. No. It's on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> Facebook official. Yeah, right. Good luck. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you next week.